Hello and welcome back to the Ramadan podcast, Safa and Sada edition. We've been really lax on this lately, so we're going to try and do the rest of Ramadan. We're on day inshallah. 20, inshallah. We're on day 20 right we're now. We're on the night of the 20th. We're on the night of the 20th. There's 30 days in Ramadan, mm-hmm. approximately, so we'll try to do 10 days in a row. We've been lax because of finals week and some summer session just started, and so we've been a little bit busy. We will we haven't been able to record any sessions. We're too tired at night to do it. And yeah. <laughs> once, once we wake up in the morning, we're fasting. And so that's what happened. But we'll try and push through to the end of Ramadan and try not to be lazy. Inshallah, we'll do it. So if you guys have like something you want us to talk about or anything, just hit us up in the comments um, and tell us. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're here for you. I agree. Help me to help you. Help me to help you. What is that in? I don't help know. Help me to help you. Help me to help you. Oh, it's house. <laughs> I don't think it's house. It is. I think help, it's... Me help, help me to help you. Help me to help you. Help you. You just like lose his brain. So, um, how was your day today, Sara? Today was tiring. I like mentally and stomach. Like it's gone to the point of Ramadan where like your body is just eating itself. <laughs> like it no longer has any reserves. Yeah. So like I literally felt like my stomach was shrinking physically. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I was like my stomach was eating itself. Um, so um, at this point of Ramadan, if you don't eat a lot at night, which I don't really do, um, you kind of just like run out of reserve. So your body just starts to eat. Like, you run out of like food in your system. So your body just eats itself basically or starts to eat itself. Um, but my body already eats itself because of keto. <laughs> so like, I feel like I'm like double the amount kind of like eating itself. So like, I've like, I've run out of like my food reserves and then I've run out of my fat reserves because of keto. So my body's just like, I have nothing to eat, you <laughs> horrible woman. <laughs> and so today was just like, I was just really hungry. Like today? at the later half, I was just starving. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why. So I had a big dinner, but like, I did that and then I started my Comp210 class, which is a visual media class. Um, it's better than public speaking, so I took that. Um, and then I looked at the GRE a little bit, got bored from it, and so <laughs> stopped it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, for those of you who don't know, the GRE is like the SAP, but for grad school, which is the dumbest thing ever. But yeah, that's me. That was my day. I was kind of like okay today, cause I I stayed up till sahur. Mm, I don't do and that. I, I go ate to like one or two. I stayed up till sahur, and that allowed me to sleep like until my class, and then I and then I took a nap like two hours before halal and fatar before we broke our fast. I made a salad with avocados, tomatoes, cabbage, purple cabbage, and uh, I can't think of anything. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> oh, I put like onions in it. Yeah. Okay, what I remember it. is I don't know if you said this, I just kind of wasn't paying attention. We put avocados, tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, and the cabbage. Oh, I didn't say cucumbers. Okay. So, yeah, so, that was the you. salad. It was okay. It was nice. I actually liked it with my meat. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we had meat today. My mom went and got a goat. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, Tunisians and Arabs in general are um, very big meat fanatics. They love to eat meat, especially our family. We just like love meat, and I don't know why, but we just love meat. We're like, I don't want. We're carnivores. I was gonna say cannibals again. <laughs> we're carnivores, and we just love meat. And we know that like the younger the lamb is or the sheep is the better the meat the better tasting meat is because like it's not rough and tough and it's been through ages and stuff so like the younger the the sheep is the better the meat is kind of thing and we got a pretty young lamb sheep or lamb i think lamb and sheep are kind of the same thing but they're different no they're different meat wise they're different because sheep I- also animal wise they're different <laughs> species sada <laughs> Hey. A sheep has fur on it. A, a sheep has, has a coat on it, and a goat doesn't. A lamb is not a goat. Is a lamb a goat? I'm so confused. Anyways, 
So like the younger the, the species, the better meat it is, and like the younger the age, the younger the species. No, same difference. That doesn't make sense. That makes sense. The younger the species, what does that mean? The younger the animal is. Okay, the younger, younger the animal. Younger. It does it like younger is a term specified for age. Okay, so but a species it, is a matter, term specified matter, for different oh, genes oh, that make a different what? animal. What? Yes. Okay, so the younger the species. No. Yes. <laughs> no, that it's doesn't make sense. That's though. like saying I hear oh pain. Oh my god, does it matter? Does it matter? That's like saying I hear pain. Doesn't matter. It doesn't Why make sense. Why are you sense. making a fight? <laughs> not making a fight. You are. You're like. <laughs> it's the younger the animal, okay, not the younger, the younger the species. age. Yes. Of the animal. There you okay, go. Now that we've foregone the grammar <laughs> discrepancy. What you said. Can we forego the grammar discrepancy? Made zero sense. Okay, can we forego? It's not the, a grammar discrepancy. Can we forego you just the, used the wrong discrepancy. words. Can we forego the grammar discrepancy? Say it one more time. Can I don't we think they heard forego you. <laughs> the grammar discrepancy? Sure. Okay, cool. So the younger the animal, or the younger the age of the animal, um, the better the meat is, and we got a pretty young one, so it was like very like yummy. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean. <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry. <laughs> meat is too good. <laughs> oh my god. Um, well, we also celebrated Mother's Day. Oh yeah, like really hard this two, week, this that, year. That was two days ago. Two We've days never ago. celebrated Mother's Day before. I mean, like we have, but like no, we haven't. Not that hard. I know. But we have. We have one, like, Happy Mother's Day! The older siblings get our gifts, by the way, on Mother's Day. We just didn't know. Just so you know, Mother's Day has been celebrated multiple times. And my sister got um, an ice cream cake from her husband and, like, ten pizzas. <laughs> and Sada couldn't have any of it. It's okay. It's an ice cream cake, y'all. <laughs> Feel my pain. Feel my sorrow. <laughs> But I made cookie dough, so I'm having- so like when they take out the cake, I take out my cookie dough so I don't be like... <laughs> like cookie dough. We also got a lot of flowers. Oh yeah. For Mother's Day. Is that an orchid? I think so. There's one in our mom's room right now. And it's like huge. They got it from Safeway. Meherineta. You get all the flowers. You can get flowers from Walmart? I know, but you always go to Safeway to get flowers, because Safeway flowers are bomb. Walmart flowers are dead. Yeah, that's true. But um, yeah, that was our day today. Our kind of like week. Because yeah. Mother's Day was a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. I'm also writing a story, a short story. I was like, I need to write something. Hmm. I was like, I'll write a short story because short stories can like be short. <laughs> right. But now I want to make it into like a full bowl series. Bruh, how many full blown series are you writing? I have um, The Descendants of Arthur, I have The Kingdom of Zoa. The mob boss one that I have in my head, and then those are like the th oh yeah, and then the maze of horn, the horn of mazes, maze of horns, yeah. Those are the four big ones that I'm thinking about right now. But I think I'm gonna add a fifth one because the four because the short that stories are finished <laughs> are not enough to tackle. What can you I need say? More. You need another one. I just just, just to just to create enough pressure <laughs> to make the kettle go. To make the or I'll just keep it a short story. I don't know. I made it like a series of short stories. Well, why don't you stories. put a link to your short story in the, the I, comments so people can tell you? I haven't written it yet. Finished it yet. Okay. No, no, I'm short. almost done. I'm, but like, it's supposed to be short. I'm at the last part, yeah. But it's supposed to be short. Okay, yeah, a short story can be like 30 pages long. <laughs> I'm at the last part of it right now. I'm at the part where everything gets explained and she's gonna die. I don't know you whether just spoiled the book to let her. I don't, swear, I just, don't know whether to let her die or not. You so, just spoiled the book. I You're don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want her to die or not. So I'm Again, not spoiling it. I'm thinking about it. I was like, right. what's a better okay, ending but, like, to the they story? Know that either she's gonna die or she's not gonna die. So they know. I mean, the that's every story. character ever, though. Yes. No. Yes. No, no. Yes, yes. No, no. Yes, yes. No. What do you mean no? <laughs> I mean no. It's not in every book. Anyways, I'm just having trouble figuring out, like, if I want to make it into a full-blown series. give her series, some ideas. If I want to make it into a full-blown series, I think I'm going to let her live, but if I don't want to, I will kill her off. 
Wow. So they don't know what's coming because they'll be like, it's a novel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a series. <gasps> it's a series. She's not. So you just spoiled the book. Yeah. No horrible self bubbles. <laughs> what's wrong with that? I don't, like, You're not supposed to spoil things for people. I just watched a video that said spoiling is not necessarily a bad thing. But you also just spoiled it and that's a big like horrible thing for some people aka me <laughs> you don't really like reading my stuff i just hate people spoiling things you know <laughs> you never know i could read it K- should i explain my stories like real quick no okay <laughs> go ahead do you not stories. like them that much <laughs> it's like, i don't care about them they're your stories i'm just the editor-in-chief you're not the editor-in-chief you don't even like reading them because i hate reading I don't like reading like at certain moments of my life. Alhamdulillah. Like, uh, I go to school and alhamdulillah. I go to school and I have to like read textbooks and questions and lab research and papers and, and so I go home and I just don't want to read. <laughs> if that makes sense. Do you, do you understand my drift? Yeah. Okay. That's why. It's not like I don't want to read your stuff, it's just I just don't want to read, period. Yeah, I get it. I don't take it personally at all. Mm-hmm, sure. <laughs> I believe that. Love oh, with your failure! <laughs> we watched a lot of cartoons recently. We watched Storks. Mm, that really was funny. A good, that's hilarious. That was the scene where they're like fighting, but the baby just sleeps and they have to be quiet, and she's like a bunch of penguins. It's dying. a good thing. I didn't know Andy Samberg was the main seagull. This sure, I know him. The guy from Brooklyn Nine Nine. Sure, I know him. Threw it on the ground! That guy. Isn't that Pete Davidson or whatever? No, Pete Davidson's another dude. They're all the same, <laughs> they're all the same character. <laughs> I didn't know he was the main... Um... I've been watching Shit's Creek recently. I'm actually on the last season. Oh, it's nice. hilarious. I actually just saw a video from it because like, I found like season 6 somewhere. And they have season six episode zero where they like they talk about the show and stuff. And it's actually really, really interesting. Apparently David, the character, and the dad, Eugene. Right. Johnny Rose, their son and they're the creators of the show. Okay. So no, it's just interesting. They created the show. And like That happens though. So. I know, but like usually it's like I just didn't know that. Like they created it. Like and it was mostly like David who created it. Eugene is his name. He was the one who really created it. Um, the Office. Or Dan- Daniel is his name, actually. But Daniel's the one who, like, created the idea for the show. And apparently, you know how you're always like, their outfits are so amazing, whatever. They spend hours doing fittings to, like, find good clothes for them. Like, I didn't know that. But, like, they spent, they actually, most of their money goes into the fashion of the <laughs> show. Like, because they always use the same set. They always use the same right. things. Literally, they always go over budget on the fashion. Always. I love their outfits. And, but, like, it's so interesting. Because, like, a lot of people, like, yes, they go over budget. But, like, it sets the tone of the show so well. Right. That, like, it's necessary to go Like, just over because budget. I live in this crappy town doesn't mean I'm going to let my style. Exactly. Cramp up. <laughs> and it's, like, very, very, very interesting, I think that they always went over budget for what's it called apparently it was filmed in toronto as well is everything is filmed in toronto <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right or georgia <laughs> you need the woods just go to canada basically but i just thought that was very interesting that they spend most of their money a, a lot of the office episodes are written by the actors themselves i mean yeah yeah, yeah but like and SNL the is initial, the same thing. The initial idea of the show came from a character in the show. Like, he literally made the show from point blank. That's a lot of shows. I know, but like, I've never watched a show like that, personally. Really? Yeah. Literally maybe, all the, all the maybe shows I have, that I watch are like, like... Maybe I have. Original like, I ideas. But like, I thought it was interesting, because like... The way he was talking about it was like, he's like, there are a lot of shows where like families go bankrupt or whatever and it's like them dealing with it, but like there's not one that's like this. And they won an Emmy apparently. Yeah. They were like nominated four times and they actually won one. That makes sense. I was like, bruh, it's crazy. What were they, what did they win? 
Like best screenwriter. I have no idea what they won, but show. it just shows that scene where they won the Emmy like a billion times in that <laughs> show, that episode. But like, it's just interesting to see, and like they're doing it on their own. Like they're not letting the fans. Like one thing they're very adamant about is they weren't make letting the fans dictate where the show goes. That's which very. Important. I think is super important because once once you let the fans dictate, you lose the show. There's like a fine line. Where you like, because, like for example, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Let's talk about that. So it was on Fox, mm -hmm. and they canceled it like on season two or three, I believe. And then overnight, like on the internet, everybody freaked out, and it was picked up by NBC. So like, the fans saved the show, right? But so like, you can't. You if you have an idea for the show, you can't. I'm you not, can't let the fans. It's like, true. Change. They are toxic. They are toxic. Fans. Change the idea of the show because there are so many shows that like just end horribly because the directors or the writers go with what the fans want. It's basically AKA Game of Thrones, AKA, AKA Star Wars. Star Wars. AKA Can I talk about Star Wars? Literally I'm gonna everything. Rant about Star Wars Don't like, rant about Star Wars. I'm not gonna Wars. rant, but like just give me like a minute. I'll give you a minute. At 1744, you stop talking about it. Go. <laughs> okay. So, in Star Wars, like, the fans, they've been so dedicated, and they did, and the prequels, they're like, oh, the prequels sucked or whatever, but then they brought it back for the sequel trilogy, right? And so they're like, the fans were really excited, and they're like, we want to be behind this. Disney, give us something that we want. But, like, they brought in three different directors. They had, like, no plan for it whatsoever. And the last movie, like, people were so, like... The Last Jedi was so like. No, it was the Rise of Skywalker. No, no, it was the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was so polarizing. Like my best friend, Sarah, she's like been a Star Wars fan she, since she was a kid, mm -hmm. and she hated that movie. <laughs> she was like, "Why does Leia have uh, the Force?" And I was like, "Her brother is Luke, and her dad is Darth Vader. Like, why wouldn't she have the Force?" And she's like, "She's never used it before." I'm like. What? <laughs> like, that's what they were thinking. They're like, I didn't like that scene. Even though I thought that was like, I'm like a recent Star Wars fan. Like, she got me into it recently. Mm. And so I was like, how can you not think that, like, Leia, who's the brother of Luke Skywalker and the son of Anakin Skywalker, who are two amazing Force users, why do you not think that she doesn't have it? Well, what kind of logic and they're they got okay so i get over that i'm like i get it it's their property and they love it but it's like it's not their property but um and then the so rise of skywalker comes out and it's basically just like fan service that's it there's no story there's no plot it's just they it's go on a scavenger sleep. hunt I want to sleep. and i, I want to, to sleep so in the theater disappointed like like i really really like the last jedi and they just made it so that movie didn't exist which really pissed me off because like those toxic fans they took over and they made you the story give them worse what they want. but but like you said you can't just give people what no, of they course. want they, you have to like like for example when you're writing a story there has to be a purpose you set up something you explore it within the middle section and then you wrap it up at the end you can't just like make you can't just like bring plots out of nowhere and do stuff out of nowhere. It's, it's, I mean, they can do it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just, it. you can do that. You can do like plot twists and stuff like but it has to like support the narrative. But the reason why I'm having trouble like deciding whether or not I should kill off my character in my book in my short story is because I don't know whether it will benefit the story or harm the story. I mean, that's up to the writer itself. That's true. But, like, when you have toxic fans telling you what they want and you put that and it doesn't serve the story. Like, there are some fan moments that do serve the story. And I like those. But most of it was just, just like, pandering See, like, an example? To, to a, the loudest voice in the room. Even though most of, like, the people, like, did not like The Rise of Skywalker. Like, from what I've seen online, from, like, A lot my, of people hated it. Yeah. A lot of people did not like it. The movie. I mean, I've never been a Star Wars fan, so I just didn't like it. I mean, and I didn't like it either. Like, it's... It didn't, like, break my heart because I'm not, like, that big a Star Wars fan. Like, but when I talked to my friend Sarah about it, like, she did not like The Last Jedi. She's like, oh, I like this one. I was like, 
it, it just pandered to like the people who were the loudest in the room which really like sucked like the fact that Disney doesn't have the guts the guts to like go with what Ryan Johnson was doing like he was trying to like break the formula because the original it was basically just the original trilogy he was trying to like in the second movie he the second movie was basically the last movie from the original trilogy but he was trying to make it so like the next person could do something different uh -huh. that's what he was doing he's like i'm doing this now so that the last movie can be something different that's what he was trying to do like that's what i believe at uh -huh. least and they're like no we'll just do the same thing uh -huh. we'll uh, be the three force users standing in a room talking about the light versus the dark and um somebody defeats palpatine like that's happened twice It'll in piss 10, me off, 20 though, years. how the she 60s? comes in the end of the movie and she's like, I am a Skywalker. And I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> oh, Go find your real oh name that pissed Dumbo. people off. Oh, my that God. That was so stupid. But, like, it you're right. So Toxic fans yeah, are, and so, should not dictate how a story should go. So, it should be, story beats should happen to benefit the story. That's my the end of my rant. Go ahead. This, that was a very long rant. We're at 21 minutes and 36 seconds, just so you all know. And I gave her till 17 minutes and 44 seconds. Anyways. Oh my but, goodness. <laughs> but like, sh I like that Shit's Creek isn't following that pattern. And, and the guy in charge makes it very clear. He's like, he's like, because he was in an, I watched an interview today or whatever of him. And he goes, and one of the ladies is like, how are the fans go? Like, are you playing to the fans? And then he's like, well, thank God we already wrote season six before the fans. Like, because they didn't really get, like, big until now. They were kind of like a hidden, what's it called? Like a black, was it the black horse? The Trojan horse? Black sheep. Black, black sheep of media. Like, I didn't know about Shit's Creek until my sister told me Shit's Creek was a thing. Like, you don't know about it. You, it's a show that grew by word of mouth. Right. Like, I've never seen any ads for Shit's Creek. I've never seen any, like, videos online for Shit's Creek. But, like... I heard about it from somebody and that's how the show grew is by word of mouth and that's how people started to like know about this show basically until they made season six and they're like season six is the final season they're like and all these like news people are like but it like in the episode I was watching all these news people are like but it's the perfect show when it's the perfect cast and he's like no this is the final season like I I can't see it going like it's the perfect ending to a perfect story right basically is what he said and everybody's like oh and he's like but like I'm not gonna do that to the story like it will ruin the story mm -hmm. if I keep on like milking it aka legend of Korra but like <laughs> Oh, that was bad. That was horrible. Oh, God. So stupid. How can you have, like, the same, like, writers? And It wasn't the same writers, uh, Yeah, yeah, right, He yeah. left. Yeah, he lived. The main left. writer left. He left and did the Prince of the Dragon Prince. This is really good. Yeah. Um, no, the problem with, like, setting an ending, though, is that, like, remember How I Met Your Mother uh -huh. and all that stuff? Apparently, they filmed the ending, like, at season one. Uh -huh. Because they didn't, the kids. You know how he talks to the kids mm -hmm. during the show. He's like, "This is how I met uh -huh. your mother." He he, like you can't make them grow up while he's telling the story, right? Mm -hmm. He's like telling the story one thing. So they filmed. No, they actually filmed it with them. No, he's that like, was like a joke on S. That was a joke on SNL, I think. No, um, and so they filmed like the last scene, but like it didn't like the show like progressed on its own, uh -huh. and it didn't make sense for it to end this way. Because, like, people, like, characters grew yeah. and stuff like that. And, like, they they didn't, like, they made it so that, like, Robin and Ted got back to, got yeah. together at the end. And everybody was like, that doesn't make sense because they tried it over the course of the series and they don't work together. And mm -hmm. they've tried it multiple times. Like, why is this the ending? And it was because they filmed it before they did all that stuff. So there's also that, like, tricky line between, like, having a fixed ending. Like, if your show, like, progresses and evolves and stuff like that. And, like, this happens with Parks and Recreation. Like, the first season of Parks and Recreation is trash, man. It's so bad. Like, she, like, the main character is very uptight. Very, like, narcissistic. Very like not nice like she's mm -hmm. out for herself but like they changed her in season two and they're like let's make her more nice let's make her like a better character like somebody who could grow mm -hmm. and they did that with the rest of the cast and i ended up really liking parks and recreation they did the same thing with brooklyn 99 like at first he was a jerk but then he evolved and now he's a better person mm -hmm. so like you can't just have like a fixed ending for something you have to plan it out but like Make room for adjustments. I think, I think 
That's like the perfect show I in my think, opinion. I think the perfect show, and we'll end on this, but I think the perfect show is you have a beginning, you have an end, make them meet somehow. Yeah. That's what I think the perfect show is. Because if you let it go out of, like, if you don't know where it's going to end, then it could just become chaotic mm-hmm. and it can go on forever. Like, that's what's going to happen. Like... The Simpsons. Simpsons. Just okay, Simpsons is just a show that, like, goes on forever and it's just built on comedy, like, forever. Um, but it's actually the longest running animated series ever. That's not true. Ever. No. Yeah. In America, yes. Not in the entire world. What's the longest? Detective Conan. Uh, <laughs> and okay. even like an older Japanese show that I can't remember the name, but like like modernly, like Detective Conan is long. Okay, 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 okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, there has to be a beginning and there has to be. So for any of you like story writers out there, take this advice. Know how it's going to start. Know how it's going to end. Create a line. Like create a string or like a needle. In- an outline. No, that's what like, I do. If I that's think about I it, if I think about it, like you are sewing a picture for us. Mm-hmm. Sew the picture. So you have your starting dot and you have your end dot. Sew the picture for us. Mm-hmm. Lead us through your story. Um, lead us through the ups. Lead us through the downs. And make it to the end. Like for example, Game of Thrones. Like I've watched it. I loved the ending. But I think there are a lot of things that they rushed through because of time constraints, because they didn't have, maybe they didn't have money. Or, or they didn't have the passion. They didn't have, no, I think they definitely have the passion, but I think the 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 nervousness of the fans, like, because the fans wanted so much. Right. And it's just enough to, not well, enough time to give it to them. Right. Um, and so I think if they, they stick to their gut, and, and stay longer. Like they, like why did you amass all these fans? Because you, you created took, a great story. You t- took the effort, took the risk to go from point A to point B to point C, all the way to point Z. Right. But they, I love the way it ended. And if they just like gave us like two more episodes, mm-hmm. like maybe like two versus the Night King. Like they did the Night King in one episode, and he. I thought it was going to be like, you know, like One Piece where like the mm-hmm. top people fight the top ice people and whatever, but like then Arya just kills the ice king. One which Piece I is thought special was, like, in my, anyway. when it comes to storytelling. But like, I thought it was so like cool, like the way that Arya killed him, but like it could have been done a little better, I feel. Mm-hmm. And then, but like the idea of Daenerys just killing everybody, that's like obvi because like, like yeah, Daenerys just went crazy because of genetics and stuff. Okay. Um, and and that was like I thought that was a that was a good path to go on. Like Daenerys just like because like also what happened was like Cecilia, what's her name? Like killed one of her like best friends. Like of course she's going to destroy your whole freaking city and burn it to the ground. Yeah, and when this you woman's took whole everything career. away. Basically, if you took everything away from her, like. She was supposed to have it. And then, like, I thought it was really cool when John, like, killed her. Because Jon Snow was, like, he understood, like, okay, she's lost it. She's not the person she is anymore. Mm-hmm. And kills her. And then I loved the dragon burn the throne. That was, like, perfect. And then, like, the final scene when they're all on the, the, the table. And, like, all the people at the table, if you go, like, the first, like, when they first appear in the show, they're, like, literally the bottom of the scrap bowl. Literally. And now they're, like... The royal people, the people in charge of the city, and like the seven kingdoms or whatever they call it, right? And I thought that was everybody like hated that. And I was like, that was literally the best point about everything. And then Sansa becomes queen of the north, and Jon Snow's like, peace out, I ain't got time to deal with y'all anymore. And I thought that was really nice for him, just like to take a mental and physical break from life. <laughs> and then Arya's just like, I'm gonna go explore the world. Which I thought was super cool. The only thing I didn't understand though was like how like the Raven dude became the king when earlier he's like I can't become the king because I know all and uh, and then he became the king and I was like that that's counterintuitive that was just hypocritical. Anyways, <laughs> beginning and connect them through a needle in your thread. Yeah, but yeah. So and people won't like it, but that's okay. The people who do like it will stick around. Exactly. And if not everybody likes it, then you've created something that matters to you. And that's that's 
all that really matters is that you've created something that matters to you personally and if people want to jump on that wagon they'll jump on that wagon like look at harry potter true like no nobody understood what it was when it first came out and now it's like the wizarding world literally come to universal studios in harry potter world like people like (laughs) are like i want to be born in the harry potter world and it's like yeah we can't handle it sorry but yeah um share link subscribe (laughs) and thank you for listening